The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So, visit FanDuel.com slash 247 and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, permitted parishes only, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, or Wyoming. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia or call one 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York or visit oasas.ny.gov slash gambling. Standard text messaging rates apply. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, Utah, and other states where prohibited. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. Welcome to the PowerCat Podcast, GoPowerCat.com's Kansas State Athletic Show. Now, here's your host, Go Power Cat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of The Insiders. I am Fitz, the guy across from me. Oh, wait, hold on. That way. Way over there is Brian Hanley. I could never do the weather. A guy who uh, probably could do the weather but does sports, Glenn Kinley from 27 in Topeka. The man with the voice. The man with the presence. I, I ran out of stuff there. Tim Everson from the Manhattan Mercury. I don't have his name on the bottom. Is that is that part of the new setup? Oh, hold on. What happened? They were supposed to be there. They were there earlier. It says display names. People are going to mix mix me and Brian up if we don't have them. Exactly. It's not, it's not displaying names, and it's supposed to be displaying names. Oh, no. What? Cancel the show. Let's, okay. That's not what I wanted, but thanks for putting that up. That was appreciated. Uh, minimal. Okay, the, I still don't want that. Why are you showing that? Uh, it's always a, hold on. about the Liberty Bowl. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, what? Why? Why are you showing the the banners? Hide. Hey, 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 hey. There we go. Why did it do that to me? You know what? It was because last week's show. I got so carried away last week, it, it decided not to work. Stream your uh-huh. decided, he said we can't. Yeah. yeah. Let's put him in timeout. I've got to run my headphones up underneath my sexy shirt, so who cares? Hey, guys, uh, let's have a normal show this week. Uh, but I do want to start with a correction, uh, and I put, pointed this out immediately following the show. I had some information wrong last week about a conflict between the university president and head basketball coach. That wasn't correct. Um, and I apologize. I, after further review of my notes, the many notes and texts and phone calls and everything, it was between the university president and one of the biggest donors to Kansas State in, in the, outside the locker room prior to that game. So I apologize for getting that wrong. 
Uh, but there was there was an occurrence. I wasn't crazy. I just too much information. And let's be honest, I'm working with the brain of a monkey. I, I'm sorry. We just got to we got to face reality here that this brain ain't what it used to be. Kind of like uh, Kansas State basketball from game to game. Uh, that was guys. Uh, K State loses last night. I've, I've blacked out the score. Um, I, I don't sixty six to forty. So I, do you remember mm. Tim? It's like I don't 60, know. 62 to 47. Does that I sound know. right? I think yeah. it was 18 points, so 66 yeah. to 46 or something like that. I don't. I, I mean, I've got them right here. I just don't want to ever see them again. <laughs> um, dreadful performance. And yeah. here's the thing is, um, Tim, you were there. When your team shoots the ball well, you are a brilliant coach. <laughs> when your team shoots – awful and scores 12 points and a half and misses 12 three-pointers mm-hmm. and by the way they took 12 three-pointers in the second half and missed them all and they weren't forced they were open mm-hmm. um you're not gonna win i mean that's just that's just the way basketball goes yeah surprisingly uh 27.6 percent from the field is just isn't gonna get it done uh a historically bad yeah. offensive night i mean it's uh 62 to 46 is, is the score. Thank you. Thank you, Briar Star, in the comments. Uh, uh, yeah, it was tough to watch. And it was, I, I, I don't know about if it's you or you guys watching it, but I was, I was kind of waiting because this team has done this before where they've been absolute crap and then have found a way to kind of hit that gear right in time to either, you know, get, get it to overtime or to get, get things back on track. And uh, that gear just never came. And nope. It was, it was, uh, you know, this is a better Nebraska team. They're, they're so athletic. And it's like, you know, they got, they have pieces, but this isn't, you know, this isn't a top 15 Nebraska team. Mm-hmm. And there's no, there's no world in which that kind of performance should have happened. Uh, but it did. And here we are. Yeah. You know, you know, Glenn, um, sometimes your team's going to shoot poorly. That's just the way it goes. Um, And that wasn't my real problem. I mean, that was just one of those things. My real problem was the fact that they got hammered on the boards. Yeah. And and the, and particularly the defensive boards, giving Nebraska a lot of second, Mm -hmm. second opportunities in the second half. That's what bothered me. I think that's what bothered Tang the most. Uh, Coach Tang said three great days of practice leading into this. And so when I got to credit Nebraska, this isn't just K-State playing bad. Fred Hoiberg's team came out in the second half and said, you know what? We're going to rebound every damn miss and, and turn it into a make. And they did. Yeah, when when you don't shoot the ball well, it's kind of about how you respond to that. And when you're not shooting the ball well, you have to find a way to do everything else right, whether that's defending really well or or rebounding really well. And K-State really didn't do either. The defense, I guess, wasn't horrendous, but but they certainly didn't rebound. It's kind of – we didn't – expect this before the season tank talked about what a great shooter tyler perry is and then i think before the season or maybe right after their international trip he talked about he said that he's had shooting metrics for their drills that he's been doing since his time at baylor that he was going to have to adjust the standard on these drills because they were hitting so many shots so it's on i don't want to say unusual because because they haven't shot the ball great this year but unexpected is the better word uh, for them to shoot the ball this poorly you have to hope that it doesn't continue but if it does like i said then you've got to find a way it, if you're not shooting the ball well, then quit taking the threes and find a way to get it in the pit post. Find a way to get layups. I, I yeah, great idea, Glenn. Just yeah. just get the open layups. Uh, they, I should suggest that to them. I know, but it's more about what do you do when you're not shooting it well because that's going to happen. And and the best teams win when they're not playing well or not shooting well. Well, that's part of it, Glenn. Is what you mentioned is that's the problem with K State. You're not shooting the ball well. You don't have a guy that you can just throw the ball into that can go get you a basket. And that's where the difference is, is that other teams and good teams, they have a way. Even if it's not just, okay, they're getting in the paint, but they have a way to get an open 8, 10, 12-foot shot for a guy or or a layup for a guy. They have ways to be able to do that. K-State right now, they don't have that. And so that becomes a big problem. And if you're not making shots, and I know what they're thinking is that eventually one's going to go in. Well, it never went in, you know, and you just keep shooting and you just keep missing. 
look, guys can make baskets, and, and I fully understand that. But it's not like we have just knocked down lights out shooters right. where they can just shoot themselves out of this. That's not what K State has. And they acted like that, and then they paid for it, and then they got out physical, which I think that was the problem uh, that Coach Tang didn't like is that they got out physical. And when you get out physical and you shoot bad, that's the kind of performance that you get. Any reason to worry, Tim Everson? Not yet. Not yet. This is still not a team that isn't 100% together. Uh, I think that Quez Glover is going to add add something that is going to kind of change how 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 kind of things things operate. I, I I you know I hope I hope that that uh, his addition kind of helps things move a little smoother offensively. Maybe gets the ball out of out of Tyler Perry's hand a little bit, allows him to kind of get a little more free. Uh, allows them to maybe create more for open shots for him, uh, but you you know you gotta you gotta have someone that can just take over it when things aren't going well, and that's and and I was starting to think uh, after last week that person could be Arthur Kaluma, right? Because uh, he was dominant versus LSU and versus Villanova, and uh, for whatever reason I don't know. If it's a Creighton, Nebraska thing, if that was in his head at all, uh, I did notice that the Nebraska fans in the arena were especially loud whenever he uh, went to the free throw line, opposed to other people. Uh, I I don't know, but it, there, there's you got to go. Wichita State's decent, but not great. You got to go, got to go win that, mm-hmm. and then you have some stuff to figure out in that week and a half before they play uh, Chicago State right. and start Big Twelve play. So, Glenn, they do play Thursday in Kansas City against the Shockers. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be there, but I hope you are. I hope I get to see you, Glenn Kinley. I'm, I'm going home for Christmas, brother. Oh, they're so selfish. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we can FaceTime if you want. Oh, that'd be sweet. I like that. Um, I'll, let's do it from the game so I can show you the game. Just I'll screen record that. our FaceTime and run the oh, highlights in our news. Man, game. that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, but this is game now. They got to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you want to blow the faith of your fan base, you lose to Wichita State, yeah. um, which in the past wouldn't have been a big deal, but right now you can't do that. And then after the break, the, the, the kids are leaving Kansas City. This game was scheduled for this date in Kansas City, so they got five days. To, they fly out the next morning, five days at home. Then they play early January against Chico State, um, and that is supposedly the first game back for Quez Glover, uh, but this this is just a crucial stretch. You got two games, and then you're into the Big Twelve, and yeah. that team that it, we saw last night is going to get beat badly in the Big Twelve. Yeah, they, they better get past that. Yeah, briefly to touch on Quez Glover, when or earlier in the year when K State had a game where Kaluma didn't play a home game, they were without Kaluma. Tom was still on the team at the time and wasn't playing, and then Quez Glover. One of the coaches told me he goes, "We were without three of our best players, if not our three best players." If that tells you how they feel about Quez Glover and kind of how big it is that they'll get him back, but they they need a few wins. K State needs to find a way to win when they're not playing well. If you only win the games when you when you play lights out. You're not going to win many Big 12 games. We've seen it. We've seen it down the road with, with KU. KU honestly hasn't looked great in a lot of their yeah. games, but they're 10 and 1 or 11 and 1, and they find a way to win even when they can't hit a shot to save their lives, even when, when nothing's going, e- even on the road this past weekend in Bloomington. They're finding ways to win when, quite frankly, they play poorly. And um, that's what K State needs to find a way to do. If you're only winning when the shots are falling, if you're only winning a or K State's found a way to win when they don't play great, but it's against you. You know who who was it? Uh, Oral Roberts and and teams like that. They got to find a way to beat legitimate teams without everything going right. And, and I don't think it's a. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, we talked about a few weeks ago. It felt like maybe they had the puzzle pieces, but the pieces aren't put together, and they're kind of spread out on the table. I think this past game, the pieces were spread out across three states or something like that. Um, but I think that's still how I feel is that they have these these contributors and it, it feels like they got to get them to work together. But, yeah, it feels like uh, K-State, it, for, to have a happy holidays, we're going to need a, a win on Thursday. Brian, that, that last night had to be disheartening. But knowing you get to go play another meaningful game to the fan base in Kansas City, you would think the players can wash that and, and move on to this. Because if they really truly had great practices – 
uh, I'm not overly worried. I'm like Tim, but if they repeat this in any way, I'll be concerned. I just don't see them shooting that poorly again. Mm-hmm. It's the rebounding and the defense I need to see corrected. Yep, that, I was just going to say that. I don't mind the bad shooting night. Not that we want it, but you're going to have bad shooting nights. It's that they didn't fight. That's where the problem is. And when you're talking about fighting, rebounding, and defense is all effort. And we didn't see that. And it, it, basically, they elect, they let – shooting affect their their defense and you can't do that you you literally can't do that not if you're going to win meaningful basketball games and that's what happened uh but it's a learning curve it's a learning process um guys you know who knows where their mental state really is you know we thought that maybe it's all over but these are still kids you know they're still younger men um so you don't know what happened but the bottom line is they just didn't play well. They, they missed a ton of shots. They let it affect them on, on the other end of the court. Uh, and they kind of gave up a little bit. I'm not saying they quit on the team or on each other. or They just said, you know what, we're not going to make any shots. We're just not tough enough. This just isn't our game. And they kind of figured that out about 13 minutes to go in the second half. And then that was the end of it, you know. So, yep. uh, But they got to bounce back. They got to bounce back. This is a good opportunity. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, they're young men slash still kids. So a lot of times you can throw that right out of there, a stinker right out of there, and get back at it. You know, I think they need to get, get up and down the court a little bit more. I think they need to run a little bit more, get out and get some more layups, uh, push the pace even more than what they're already doing. But again, they got to be able to get some baskets in the paint. They just have to be able to do that. And that's the problem is that you got to get paint touches, paint points more than anything. But you definitely got to get the paint touches, but you got to be able to find a way to get some scoring in there. Yeah. Uh, Fitz and Tim, I'm curious for you guys that were there. We had a reporter there. It wasn't me, but she said it seemed like Tang actually, after a loss like that, you expect him to, you know, be furious. He didn't seem. What did you guys think? He didn't seem furious. Maybe that's a message to his team. Hey, let's just drop this one and move on. I think that's probably a coaching um, strategy of knowing when to to tear into your guys and knowing when to say, hey, go home and let's get the next one. What did you guys think? No, Glenn, Glenn, you're right. From from what we were able to to tell from the post game, uh, he was more upset about the fact that a couple of uh, a couple of the bench players decided to run straight to the locker room after the game instead of go around and give all the fans high five uh, than he was uh, than he was about the game. Uh, I think that uh, he really, I think it was the bad shooting. I think that he just really chalked it up mainly to that he according to him he he felt that the effort was there again he was very high on the practice that they had leading into it if you know uh he was not concerned about anything else he was like there's going to be four games out of the year where just this is just going to happen where no matter what you do i you know I'll, i'll leave that to him i i still feel like there wasn't this wasn't an unbeatable Nebraska performance. No, it wasn't. They only uh, shot thirty eight percent or something. Yeah, yeah, they didn't shoot great, but they yeah. rebounded it. Yep. But but still, I mean he he I think that he is just trying to just all right, we gotta we gotta just press on. Yeah. We got another game and four days go and 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 then and, and have some good practices, have some good effort and uh just have something positive kind of to hang on to going into Christmas. Yeah, Nebraska played Frank Martin ball. Uh, let's mm-hmm. throw it up on the rim and go get it, and then you get a shorter shot. Um, maybe you make it, uh, but let's go get those rebounds and score. After the game, I finished up my story. Um, I just grabbed a quote off the post-game radio show there in the arena and then headed up the tunnel for the press conference. And I expected to you know, arrive during Tang. I was surprised to see him sitting out in the uh, tunnel and K State, as I, I wonder if it's a the promotion is going to come back for Big Twelve season, but they've got a recliner back there that they give away for the free. Someone's got to hit two free throws in that thing or something, and he's just sitting in it, looking at the stats, and he's just kind of laughing like this is unbelievable how bad this was. <laughs> you know, there's just uh, unfathomable. Uh, offered to get him a beer, he said no. Um, and I, I thought that was generous to me. I had no idea where I'd get the beer from. <laughs> but, but you would have found it if he said yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, I, I like the way he handles these things. I, I just, 
uh, you know, he went in there and said, we just, the, the coaches failed these guys. We didn't have them ready to rebound at this level. Uh, they, they showed something that we're not protecting the backside of the rim on shots. And that's, you know, as Brian will tell you, you put the ball up, particularly from the side, it's most likely going to the other side of the rim um, if you miss it. And that's what Nebraska took advantage of. And I'm not in any way blaming the officials, but the officials let Nebraska come over the top of block, to block outs quite a bit. There was some that were pretty egregious, you know, pretty obvious that they got away with. And But if you got to adjust to your officials, if that's what they're doing, man, you got to you got to find a way to adjust. It, it was overall a frustrating, uh, frustrating night or day. Um, but a good crowd, more than 10,000. The crowd stuck around for Jerome Tang's, a p- part of the crowd stuck around for Jerome Tang's radio show. That was an interesting thing that, you know, I had one of my subscribers at Go Pirate Cat, you know, said, hey, I want to try to get this. Can you help me get it out there? So I did. Um, and um, I don't know how many people, about 500. It was about triple normal, I think. Uh, maybe quadruple normal. But, boy, they made a lot of noise to show some love and support for Coach Tang. Um, and I discovered why he's late to press conferences. Uh, unlike any of us, he signs autographs. He was signing a lot of autographs after uh, after a bad well, loss. You assume I don't sign autographs. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I just I, I I didn't know. I was just saying. I am willing. I am willing. If if there's anyone out there that wants Tim Evers an autograph, just come find yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Big B and I don't. Um, no. We we don't like to have the little people around us, <laughs> and we mean that in two ways. I I didn't say that. I signed up for free. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Pete Rose. Um, you're watching the Insiders. We're about a quarter of the way in, a little more than that. Uh, four guys talking about K State sports. And today we're going to talk about more than just K State sports. On the other side of the break, I plan on getting to um, just some bowl feelings about the nine bowl games involving the teams. I don't necessarily, um, you know, we, who studied the Tax Act Bowl? No, not me. <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll just kind of talk about the Bulls in general. Uh, we're not really touching on that uh, one topic, that one thing. Uh, but I do kind of want to round this up with this. I thought it was interesting, really interesting last night. Um, and I guess it happened Saturday at the women's game. For the first time ever, they didn't introduce the president of the university to welcome him, welcome you to the game. And Tim, I just thought that was I mean, I know why everyone knows why they did it, but I just thought, just take your medicine, you know, it just, just, it, yeah, it happens, yeah. it I mean, look, it's a void. If you can avoid getting the president for your university booed, especially after things have kind of calmed down a yeah. considerable amount, I, I, I don't blame them for wanting to do that. Uh, President Linton was in attendance. He was sitting down next to Gene Taylor for the majority of the game down by the band where, where Gene normally sits. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't blame K State for doing that because yeah. that's, that's only going to, uh, to kind of shake things up more in a, in a, in a direction that they don't, don't want that to happen. So I, think I, they, I, I think they did the same thing with um, after Avery had the four or five touchdown performance at Tech. I don't think they announced a starting quarterback. They didn't. They did. Game. Right. They did. They just ran out there for the drive, and usually they say in at quarterback Will Howard, but th- they just said first down. <laughs> well, they, and they didn't do like the little videos of like, or or they didn't. They specifically didn't do a quarterback one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I just thought it was curious. I I really didn't care. I have always thought it's kind of goofy they do announce that. <laughs> um, he, no, he's he's not really out there welcoming anyone. You know, it's just. There's an arena. Ernie Barrett's actually out there with the big statue welcoming you. Uh, but Brian, it, is it a big deal to you at all? I mean, I just. I kinda... mean, not. It, it's not. But I thought first it was of weird. All, yeah, at one point it's going to happen. So let's make that clear. I mean, at some point it is going to happen. But number two, I'm with you, Fitz. I'm not sure why it even is a thing anyway. Yeah. I've been to a lot of college basketball games. And I don't remember, other than at K-State, I don't remember any other universities saying the president welcomes you to anything. I, I've never heard that. So, I've always thought it's weird. I, I mean, it is what it is, uh, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I, I agree with Tim, and I think it's good that they didn't do it to rile him, especially if he's there. If he wasn't there, take your medicine while you're not there. That would have been fine. Get it over with. 
But if he's there, then we're really drawing some unwelcome attention that that just we just got to move on at some point. We got to move on. Still want answers, but we got to move on. Well, let's give him credit. He was there. Yeah, he, he was right. there sitting That's visibly right. along courtside next to Gene Taylor. Uh, there was no great conversations about the game or the arts or um, the conflict of the Middle East going on between those two men, but they they did sit with each other the entire game. Uh, and so I thought that was notable also. Briefly, while, while we're on the topic, because I know we don't want to stick on it too long, I did just think it was hilarious. I posted the soundbite of Jerome Tang. I, I asked him if this whole situation changes his, you know, the, mm-hmm. his happiness at K-State or whether or not he wants to be here long term. And he, he gave me a really good answer, but – I had quote tweets on my on that video back to back, same soundbite, and one of them said, "It's over. He's leaving after this year for sure. We're done." And the next one said, that. "Jerome Tang is never leaving K State. It's confirmed." And that's <laughs> right. I, I, I love exactly. Alex. And I went back after seeing those quote tweets on your tweet <laughs> and listened to it again. I'm like, man, he answered yes and no at the same time. <laughs> yeah. He gave both sides yeah, exactly what they thought they funny. would hear. It was and then kind the of second funny. funniest thing of, of the quote tweets, there were. I, I didn't realize, and Brian, you, I guess I could have gotten filled in from you here. People call Louisville the Ville, and Absolutely. I didn't know this. So people were saying Jerome Tang's going to the Ville, and I was like, I mean, he he might be going to Aggieville, but I don't I don't feel like he <laughs> said that. In the town, it has <laughs> been all over U of L chat boards. The whole city yeah. <laughs> is buzzing about. I, I mean, my phone has blown up. What do you know about it? What do you know? And I'm like. I don't know anything. I don't, know, I don't even know what you're talking about. And here, I thought they were just saying he was he was going down to kites. No, no. Why? Yeah. What's what what's going on with Louisville basketball? Or is, are they going to be looking for a new coach? <laughs> Gee, well, they're 1, doing thousand percent so <laughs> well. Kenny yeah. Payne <laughs> has absolutely no idea what he's doing. It's sad because he's a really really good man, right. a very good man. Uh, he's even a really good recruiter. He's he's good at that. He's getting in homes, getting kids there. He just doesn't know how to coach basketball and put in. He's not a leader of men, if that makes sense, or a leader mm-hmm. of of a team. He's not the leader, and kids can pick up on that. And that's what's going on at Louisville basketball. He's just not a leader of kids. He, he's not the leader. He's not the guy. Yeah. He can be part of it, and it has completely fallen apart. Um, it'll be ugly on Thursday when Kentucky's going to come there. They're playing in Louisville, and they're expect now it's twenty two thousand people in the Yum Center in Louisville. They're expecting about twelve to thirteen thousand Kentucky fans in there. And if that happens, if that really happens, I don't know that Kenny Payne makes it to Christmas. No, I mean, and they get blown out. If that happens, which I think they're going to get blown out, but then you get thirteen thousand fans of Kentucky in your arena. Yeah, I don't know if he gets to Christmas. While we're bouncing around different schools, Memphis might be really good with Naquan Tomlin. Oh Memphis, I think they're already good. That's right. And they're already really solid. And, like, I feel like we're not talking enough about the huge addition that Tomlin is. Had, yeah. had he been portaling over the summer, he would have been one of the best players in the portal probably. Absolutely. Or at least Absolutely. one of the highest ceiling players in the portal. So they might be uh, really legit when he gets in there and, and starts playing. Yeah. I, had a- I was skeptical about Penny being able to coach. It seems like he may have talked to the right people, and he's got a little something figured out on how to actually coach. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think Memphis is going to be really good. They, they people should look out. And they play at Wichita State in January, so Damn. I think you might see some purple in Coke Arena. Yeah, I had a member of the Louisville media reach out to me. Uh, mm. You guys probably know who it is. Um, he's been Topeka, uh, and uh, just you know, kind of say you know, want me to fill him in, and said that. Payne's going to be gone, and they're going to just start immediately looking for a coach, and and uh, they expect to do what we do in America in college athletics now. They're going to attempt to solve the problem with lots of money. Mm. It doesn't always solve the problem, but it makes you feel like you really tried hard. Uh, yeah. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, uh, I uh, I will continue to trust him in his word that he's you know not planning to go anywhere. But um, we'll see. We'll see. And- not to rub any more salt in the wound, but to maybe put a topper on this uh, this half. Uh, you know who probably would have uh, been of a, of a big help versus Nebraska? Hmm. Naquan Tomlin. Yeah, absolutely. I, Glenn, I did think that was a, a curious answer at his press conference when he mm-hmm. talked about trying to replace Naquan yeah. on the roster and try to do it immediately like Memphis did. 
uh, probably going overseas or at least find someone that um, can come in and practice. Yeah. And and then be ready for next year, help him out in practice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, his uh, I thought his feelings kind of came through when he said, well, I'm not going to find a six <laughs> foot 10 NBA ready <laughs> guard forward that can shoot it. And can play all five and, position. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, it just described Naquan. He kind of quickly described one, how good Naquan can be and two, how he feels about him in a hurry. But yep. I, he, he was obvious about that. And it sounds like they are going to try to add to the roster, whether or not it's somebody that can take a floor. We don't know yet. Yep, we'll find out. They they are always working to uncover players. And probably the next most interesting thing to me that he said in that press conference, he, he more or less, I think, kind of answered what we were all thinking. And he said, when you asked him, Fitz, about closure and kind of about, okay, even if it's not the answer you wanted, does having an answer help? And he said, we're going to fight until the very end and, and try to get what we want and then – if we don't, speaking in hypothetical, no specific situation, if we don't, we're going to have to accept it and move on. And 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 he used a lesson that he's talked about with his players before. He said, tell people do the next right thing. And so I think he has the right mindset. I think they are going to move on. They're not going to pout for the rest of the season. They're not going to say, okay, well, we're an NIT team now because we're on Naquan. It's not our fault. We tried to keep him. And, and so I think um, – the staff has the right mindset, but it sounds yeah. like they did they did fight to try and keep them, which is what we, we already thought. Uh, you know, I had people on my Twitter mentions last night, well, this is all part of it. No, it's this the game had nothing to do with the situation. They knew about this when they played at LSU and played so yeah. well. So yeah. um I, I think maybe they didn't play well because there wasn't enough distractions this time. Exactly. They gotta get some more distractions. Let me write that down. I'll, I'll work on that. Uh, <laughs> people seem to think that that's there all I was enough, doing. There wasn't enough drama. They, yeah. <laughs> and Glenn, I was told you were uh, you looked very uncomfortable last week on the show. Was Glenn Kenley uncomfortable? <sighs> no, I was all right, man. I I I wasn't feeling well. I I that was people in my mentions though. Say, and then someone else replied and said that I was actually in the hospital. And then I think the original <laughs> person felt bad. So I don't know, man. That I, worked out then. I worked, <laughs> yeah, the, the hospital jokes helped me out, but um, no. Well, I'm glad you've moved over to the mental ward now with the padded walls. That's yeah, cool. it's looking yeah. good in here, and I, and I like how the light is just right on top of me. Yeah, not really in front of me, so the top of my head is really bright. Be thankful it's not me or. <laughs> Uh, all, all the immigrants would be coming to Kansas because the <laughs> beacon of freedom would be shining. <laughs> You're watching the insiders. We're going to take a short break right now, and afterwards, we're going to turn our attention to football. We're going to talk about K State December 28th against NC State in the Pop Tarts Bowl. Pop Tarts Bowl. I somehow I've, I've I hate sponsorship bowl names, but for some reason I kind of like this one. Pop Tarts yeah. Bowl. And uh, we're not going to get into much in depth here. It's not like the four of us are sitting around scouting all the bowl games. Well, Big B might be. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need to watch his podcast once in a while. Watch him. Get, go subscribe to his channel. He'll break stuff down. He, he, I, When I first met him, he was talking about the ho hockey. And I'm like, what? He's, he's, <laughs> I'm so confused. He's covering everything. Uh, we stick to K-State Big 12 Sports for the most part here. And we'll be right back after this short break. GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat podcast continues after this short break. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast all lowercase go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash odyssey podcast 
Welcome back to the Power Cat Podcast. We are back on the Insiders. Tim Fitzgerald, Brian Hanley, Glenn Kinley, Tim Everson. Guys, I'm actually impressed how many shows the four of us have been together with. I I like have all these backups lined up, and all we've ever had to do is settle on Ryan Gilbert, which is a step down. I we <laughs> and I think I get notes from the viewers. Why? Why do you let him have a camera? Uh, don't let him ha- just black out his picture. <laughs> so ugly. Um, but uh, here we are. We're going to start kicking in here. Uh, but let's just start here. Brian, how important is this bowl game for K-State? It's a completely different bowl game in the fact that, uh, and Coach Kleiman kind of admitted, it do- doesn't feel as much like the end of the 23 season as much as the beginning of the 24 season. Absolutely. Uh, I think we're going to start getting into to more of that when you get these bowl games, especially next year when the playoff goes to 12. Uh, bowl games, to me, are still important, uh, and, and especially moving into next year uh, with the transfer portal and guys leaving uh, before because of the way that the rules are set up. I think it it is absolutely an audition for next year. There's going to be, obviously, there's going to be some guys that are still playing. You know, Cooper Beebe's still going to be playing a lot of some seniors, offensive linemen, stuff like that. The guys are going to be out there. But for the most part, look, we're trying to see what we have for next year. And mm-hmm. that's what K-State should treat this like as next year. I think that's what a lot of the big other big programs do, is that if they're not in the playoff, they are treating this bowl game that they qualify for as, okay, uh-huh. what are we doing next year? You know, and, and I mean – and even if Will was here and Will was playing, I think Avery should have gotten 75% of the snaps in the bowl game. That that's just my personal opinion because we gotta we gotta move forward. That's you true. know, we gotta see what we got. And those practices matter. Look, I was a part of the practices in 1997 when Michael Bishop got tremendously better from the end of the season to the Fiesta Bowl. He was a totally different quarterback, and you could see it. Just from the time he we got to practice all those days, and trust me, Coach Snyder was a stickler when it came to beating us over the head in those practices. There was no walkthroughs or anything like that. We were out there. And I've seen it. everybody get better. Myself, I got better. Just going out there and practicing. And then the game is kind of refreshing. Okay, you know what? I did get better. This is working, what the coaches are saying. So, I think some of the kids will see that, especially since there's going to be so many young kids out there. It means a lot, Fitz. This means, I know it's a long-winded answer, which I usually nope. give, but it, 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 is, it means a lot to, to those young guys. And, and for people that always say these bowl games are meaningless, they've never participated in one, never been a parent of a kid that went to a bowl game. Yeah, and Brian, I would say, you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, I think it's an important bowl game. I don't know if – Win loss is the end of the world in this bowl game. Oh. I care more about what I see, and like yeah. you said, the the five six weeks or whatever it is of preparation for the bowl game, I think are huge. I care more about that than I do win loss. It, yep. If the offense looks great, if Avery looks great, if some young players make make some great plays, and also if some young players are going to make some mistakes, but if right. the efforts there, and if Avery throws a few good balls, I think uh, people will be really excited for for the 2024 season. Absolutely. Bowl games are different than what they were back when I played. You know, back when I played, you wanted to win. Mm -hmm. It was – nobody opted out or anything. Times change. You know, I'm not saying that one way is better than the other. Times are just different now. So now it's – if you're not in the playoff, okay, what are we doing for next year? Because we're going to lose people to the transfer portal. We got to go out there and make a game, make these guys understand it's about next year. Go make some plays. We want to win. Don't get me wrong. Everybody wants to win. Every competitor wants to go win, but we want to go play well. And I think that means more than anything, just what you said, Glenn. As long as guys are out there playing well, defense is flying around, and more than importantly, and I know a lot of K-State fans are going to agree with me on this one, effort. Because the last time we saw them play, they didn't show effort. So that that's the one thing that I know K-State fans are going to want to see in this game. Some excitement and some effort. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm fairly confident of one thing. They will not be playing in a blizzard. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it. Yeah. That's about it. I can check with our meteorologist just to confirm. If that happens, we got bigger problems. Yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Tim Everson, with all that was just said about K-State going with the youth movement, I always trust Vegas, uh, and I'm proven – It's proven to me over and over whenever I bet against Vegas Mm -hmm. and what they think is going to happen, I lose. Uh, Kansas State's a three-point favorite. 
Um, I was intrigued by that, that it's held up and it's still going. Uh, but uh, I think this is going to be an entertaining bowl. The Pop-Tarts Bowl is pretty excited about having two ranked teams. Yeah, it, it, it is exciting and it's interesting. I think that if, you know, K-State fans that are uh, concerned about the our, our current transfer situations should talk to some North Carolina State fans because yeah. uh, it's, it's a similar boat. Uh, they're uh, they're 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 dealing with a quarterback mix up too. The 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 one they like is in the portal. Um, that but was a weird deal too. It yeah. was too. He, yeah, he played <laughs> and then he was like, yeah. "Well, I want to keep my red shirt," which that that's got to be frustrating. That's imagine frustrating. imagine that. Imagine imagine Avery playing four games and then being like, "Well, I definitely don't want to be here anymore." And so I could play the rest of the season, but I don't want to. And so I'm just going to sit and yeah, transfer, weird. but still be on the roster. For I mean, it's just crazy. You don't keep that kid on the roster. You know, I, uh, you, you, you absolutely shouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> and if there's a way you could get rid of a scholarship, you should probably think about doing that too. But uh, that's just yep. me. Well, uh, by the way, um, I, I get a lot of weird stuff in my mentions. Um, yeah. I'm telling you a lot of weird stuff, but, uh, today having five hour energy in my mentions, uh, because I drink this on the show was, was kind of fun. So this is, this is clear pandering for sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, I but, like it. Yeah. Got a spot for it down there in the corner. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly. Great. We used to get the ad spot the, the cat scratch is in there right now. Cause it's the holidays and nobody needs a cat scratch in the holidays. Let's move on to some, Oh, hold on. I want to talk about this real quick. It looks more and more like Will Howard is headed to USC. Yeah. Now, when I heard about the USC thing, I'm like, really? That just doesn't seem like a fit. I, I, you know, I don't know why. I mean, there's such a different style between, you know, what they have and what they would have. Mm -hmm. um, and then I learned this little tidbit. You know, Lincoln Riley came to Manhattan to meet with Will. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that was early on. He had a twofer while in town. He sat down with Kleiman to talk about Matt Entz, the North Dakota State coach that followed Kleiman and coached on Kleiman's staff. He just hired him to be their linebackers coach. He had a two for one. So I kind of thought maybe the the Howard thing was just kind of some window dressing, you know, like I'll I'll kick the tires, but I, mean, I really want to talk about this coach. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's looking more and more like Will Howard will follow Caleb Williams at USC there equivalent of avery johnson hit the portal today yeah and th this is what it is for me fits and this is going to be a, a weird comparison but i was telling my friends this this is like for me when the bears draft justin field i love justin field love the pick i was all excited about it and then the patriots took mac jones a few picks later and i said what wait a minute if bill belichick wants him what do they know that i don't now, obviously in this situation worked out all right mac jones isn't exactly um, lighting it up out there. But it was one of those moments, if Lincoln Riley, who had a five-star quarterback, right. wants him, it makes you just think a little bit and you, it makes you be like, okay, I hope we made the right pick here. I think K-State, I'm not saying anything. Nah. But I think K-State fans are excited about Avery. But it, Lincoln Riley seems like he can typically kind of have the, the pick of his quarterback. And if, if Will Howard gets in his offense, that could be fun. But I think it says more about, uh, I think his name is Malachi Nelson that's leaving i think it says more about him because mm -hmm. if you went to usc to be the quarterback and all of a sudden they're going out into portal to get yep. another guy i mm -hmm. think that says more about him than it does anything else because you're the he was the number one recruit in all of high school football mm -hmm. and yet it's your turn and they're looking somewhere else either you're not ready or you are whatever the case may be but yeah, I think it says more about that. So if if that's the case for Will, good for him because while we know that that you know Lincoln Riley apparently he's trying to do some defensive stuff now, at least he can coach quarterbacks. He knows how to at least yeah. do that. I don't know if he's a great leader. Matter of fact, I'm pretty positive he's not. Yep. But at least he can coach quarterbacks. I know he can do that. Yeah, they might only win six or seven games, but they're going to average 42 points a game. That's right. <laughs> um, That'll help Will. Tim's now in the dark. Uh, you know that's i that's, swear it was charged but whatever that's yeah fine. that they they they're kind of like my energy levels like you get half charge and like okay i'm done and it just shuts off that's the way i operate now um but tim downington pennsylvania mm -hmm. 
to Manhattan, Kansas, to Los Angeles. It it's intriguing to me, but it's also kind of cool because they're in the Big Ten. That team's going to be playing. I would assume. I haven't looked at the schedule. Uh, somewhere closer to home um, in Pennsylvania. I don't know if they play Penn State next year or not, but um, just a very interesting situation. Got kind of cool for Will. Yeah, the the, the manifest destiny of Will Howard, uh, <laughs> slowly but surely taking over the uh, contiguous United States. I lo- I love Mr. it. Uh, I love it because we all are aware of what Lincoln Riley does for for college quarterbacks. Right. Uh, obviously, I've seen a lot of people where you're like, oh, well, I mean, uh, Lincoln Riley running off Malachi Nelson for Will Howard. Yeah. Well, I get okay, it. why would he? Okay, if he was so good, why did then he, he, would already, he would have the starting spot locked up. He'd be playing in this bowl game coming up, and he's absolutely, not. Absolutely, so. absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it makes perfect sense that after – because he would know after two years – Mm-hmm. Or after a year, I've had sorry a year of having him on the roster, uh, he would know if he was ready to go. And if he's not ready, and he thinks, don't you think that any of the other portal quarterbacks, if USC was like, hey, come over here, they they would want to come. Absolutely, yeah. Lincoln Riley wanted Will Howard immediately. Yep, immediately he was here. What uh, that the week after he entered the portal. Yep, and I, I you know I. I think that there are a lot of things that Lincoln Riley is not very good at. And I think that the deficiencies that we've seen at USC are just kind of a, a, a growth of, of the things that we saw at Oklahoma, except he ran into a very, very good Pac-12 this year and uh, they got knocked around. But I, if he believes that Will Howard can be uh, a top-tier quarterback in the country, I believe him, and I I think that this is going to be fantastic for Will. This is going to give yeah. him probably his best shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To audition to to, uh, to be a pro quarterback, uh-huh. so I'm I'm excited for him. Yep. I pulled pulled up their schedule, and their schedule is incredible. So as far as next year at USC, if he goes the first game, they play LSU. And then the third game, it's Michigan. So, I mean, they play, I mean, Penn State, Washington, Nebraska, UCLA, Notre Dame. So he is going to have the visibility that he is looking for. So more power to him. If that's what it ends up being, more power to him. And I would like to stick with my prediction that I made last week or the week before on the show that K-State plays uh, Will Howard in a bowl game next year. I don't know what bowl game. I I still don't know for sure if if it's USC, but wherever he goes, um, that will be who K-State plays in the bowl. Interesting. So we're just going to go cut right to the Rose Bowl, right? (laughs) Who knows? 12-team playoff. They could meet. They could meet. Yeah, good. We get we did get a question in the chat though, a paid question. So I feel like we got to address oh, it. I, yeah, I don't have, I have I don't have that up because I'm getting ready to do some other stuff. But go, Come let's on. do it. It's can you hey, this North Carolina State linebacker. Oh yes. Uh, good morning to you all. That's very nice, you Canelio. Are you familiar with the NC State linebacker Elber, uh, who is not playing in our game? And I'm just not saw he's an All American linebacker. Yeah, that they've got some they got some guys sitting this one out. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, honestly, I thought it was really funny. Chris Kleiman admitted I haven't scouted them one bit. I mean, I'm just working on other stuff. I'll get to <laughs> I don't it. Think he, he hadn't been at practice in a while. <laughs> I get it. I get it, man. So, it's, it's, it's that time of the year. You got to do what you got to do. The bowl prep will take care of itself. You got assistance. You got GAs. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Yep. So, but the one thing is, I do know about that linebacker because, again, I follow Louisville. They played Louisville. The guy was all over the field. I think uh, he's probably the number one or two best linebacker in the country. I know because he's a first team all American, a lot of people say that, but just uh, there's a lot of times a guy may not be in a first team all American is better than those guys. This guy is legitimate. So 
K State yeah. is catching a, a, a break solid here. Break. Yeah, yeah they are catching a break here. <laughs> while we're talking linebackers, maybe the biggest news that not many people are talking about from this past week is Austin Moore announced he's going to come back next year. He Guys, that, he's yeah. good. That's so huge. And not, that linebacker group all of a sudden looks terrific for yep. next year. Mm-hmm. You're talking about Austin Moore, Desmond Purnell, and then two young guys who I thought actually were really good this year, Jake Clifton and Austin Romaine. I think Jake Clifton's going to be a stud. So yeah. you're looking at four linebackers that, that are coming back next year. That Plus Asa Newsom. Yeah, yeah, Asa Newsom looks really good. Next. Would have been probably he'd have been a close to all the big club level. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was looking so good early in the season. Mm-hmm. So, this, I mean, they're in a good spot. You know, and, and I know this is maybe not where we're trying to go with this fit. So I apologize. I just okay. wanted to bring it up. I know K State fans were just freaking out over the portal, and I, I just I want to reiterate again: we would have seen the same thing had we not gone to the Sugar Bowl last year. And all, and if you just take a second and just dive into it, t- you're going to lose every single year from here on out until they decide that they don't allow this anymore. You're going to lose between 10 and 20 guys every single season. But you're also going to get between 10 and 20 guys every single season. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your program. It just means guys want opportunities to go somewhere else. It's just like Will. Will love K-State. Mm-hmm. But you know what? He needs an opportunity to go do something else for him, and that's okay. So I just don't want people to freak out. I know people are going to still freak out about it, <laughs> no matter what you say. But I, I think that, for the most part, the transfer portal, for again, it's been better to K-State than it's been bad. Yeah. I mean, if you're just thinking about anyway. it, what we've received versus what's left, mm-hmm. it's been better. It's been good for us. I don't know, man. I lost Joshua Youngblood, and I thought the program was going down. <laughs> Boy, that was, oh, those man. were the days. <laughs> Let's get to some of these real quick. Uh, we got about 10 minutes to go here. This one took place. Uh, this was part of my Saturday binge watching. Texas Tech managed to fumble the opening kickoff. <laughs> and win. One play later, they're down 7 nothing, uh, and they win 34-14. Um, Tech looked good. Uh, Cal really started to play some good football towards the end of the year, but I think this kind of showed where the conferences are. I, I don't want to blow out the the one head to head, but I I thought Texas looked far superior in every way during yeah. this game after the opening kickoff. The thing people got to remember: they played Tech played Oregon to eight. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. and Oregon is really really good. I mean, lost two games to a team that's in the playoff. That's it. So. Yeah, Texas tech, right. is a team that we all thought was going to be like a, a title contender, Big 12 title contender before the season, and then they didn't really pan out. But it seems like we see flashes of it, and there's moments where you're right. like, that's what we thought we were getting, and they didn't get it consistently enough. But you see yep. flashes of it, and and that quarterback of theirs might end up being pretty good. Didn't Uh-oh. Tech play three QBs this year? Yep. Yes. That's what I yeah. thought. They might have they, they, they might have played three against K-State. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, they were down to two. They were down to the third string in that second half when Avery took over. Yeah. Um, and they did uh, all this. They're one of their best wide receivers was in Manhattan. So, yeah. I mean, it's tech. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a solid win for them. That's, yep. that's, that, they lost one of their top receivers to the portal, and he's looking at Kansas State. I, I was really happy for tech to finish on that high note. Um, I thought they'd be better, but they do show signs of it. Uh, you know, everyone talks about uh, the Union Home Mortgage <laughs> Gasparilla Bowl. Gosh, I can't get people to shut up about it. Uh, I, I, I love the sponsorship because um, nobody's getting mortgages right now. Right, Brian? Nope. No. They're about to, though. Rates yeah. are coming down. Yep, They're going to come go down, down next year, but not uh, right now. No. UCF and Georgia Tech, kind of a regional game here. Um, I'm, I'm impressed Georgia Tech's in a bowl. I got to be honest. Uh, that That's just getting above that that six win or getting to that six win mark for Tech is pretty notable. But, I, I, guys, I think UCF rolls. I think with now with their quarterback back, they have been a lot better. Have they learned how to tackle? That's all that I remember about UCF. Yeah, it's just that they did, they, apparently. They came to Lawrence and Manhattan, and I think both teams like combined for like you know, a hundred passing yards and, and beat them both badly. Yeah. The basically uh, Kansas high school ranks ran for more than 500 <laughs> yeah. yards on that. Defense. It was DJ Gibbs and Devin Neal just being like, do you guys mind if I run you over for four quarters? Yes. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Next one up, uh, the guaranteed rate bowl, um, which is the bowl in Phoenix. It's been the cactus bowl, been a couple of other things. Um, 
nobody loves it. Uh, nobody wants to stay the sponsor more than a week. Uh, hmm. But I'm sure Guaranteed Rate is a fine company. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and unfortunately for Kansas, there was a shortage of P5 schools. So UNLV fills this spot. Mm-hmm. Kansas is a 12 and a half point favorite. And, and I think they win. Um, but UNLV is pretty put together. I was impressed when I watched them this year. I think the quarterback hit the portal. I think that's why that line jumped. It opened uh, smaller and then he hit the portal and, and it jumped pretty big. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, this should be, I think it should be a fun one. I think it, it's going to be a lot of points. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think the over under is 60. Yeah. Hit that like that. Time. Yeah. Ow. It could be. Ow. Maybe we'll get another repeat of the, the, hey, the Liberty Bowl last year was awesome. Yes, it was. That, oh. that game yes, was, it was one of the best college football games I've seen. That was incredible. Okay. So we've established I'm a horrible sports better. Um, in fact, uh, this house is now on its third mortgage. <laughs> That's a lie. Um, but um, uh, before that game last year, when we were in, New Orleans, um, my sidekick, Zach Carlson, said, Fitzy, have you seen this this prop bet? Jalen Daniels, more than 500 yards passing, and the, the number was just ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm not going to waste my money on that. And then he did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was right there. Barry, right Barry there. Odom was – wasn't he the offensive coordinator for Arkansas last year? Good point. He might right. have been. I mean, Right. So then he, so now he's at UNLV. So now, yeah. And then, of course, oh, okay. obviously, poor Missouri coach, but like, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't remember. I don't, I, I don't know. I know. I, don't, I feel like he was there, but it, maybe it was further back than I am. I Quick know. topic here. You know, Chris Kleiman talked about this horrible buildup of things that happened from the last game to, you know, you have to start getting ready for bowl game. It's recruiting, it's the transfer portal. Guys, the transfer portal's just got to stay closed until after bowls. I, this shouldn't be going on. I mean, th- if this is truly still the season, why are you letting players leave? Yeah, it, it, it's it, tough it, because you got the bowls and kids have to get enrolled. Yeah. It's like, mm. OK, if you wait till after the bowl season, then how do you get enrolled? How do you go take visits if you have a week to do it? Mm. It just I, I mean, I get it. Don't get me wrong. It's nuts. But I, in, in all circumstances, come you know to take it all all the circumstances in, this might actually be the best thing because if we're really looking out for what the kids you know in their best interest, if not, then you're right. Maybe we we just keep it open for a week or two, and hey, if you're in the transfer portal, you got to decide, or you got to go and you can't go at the semester. Yep. And you got to go at the, at the end of the year. It's a mess. They, they make it tough. Yeah, and teams won't like that because they want to get them in there for the spring. Absolutely, especially especially a quarterback or offensive lineman stuff like that. You know, other positions you can kind of learn as you go, but you gotta you can't do that as a quarterback. It usually doesn't work that well. It's mad. We we got guys. You got guys transferring from teams that are in the playoff. That's crazy. Yeah, it is, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. And they have to because the one that I feel bad about, which I I don't feel bad about anything for Texas, but Malik Murphy, and he came out and he was just like, I love Texas, but I also want to play. And I know I'm not going to play, so I have to leave now because if I don't leave now, I can't – yeah, I have no chance to get a spot to where I want to go. So Mm -hmm. it stinks, but, you know, that's – it's what it is. Yep, it's what I it agree. is. The Duke's Mayo Bowl on Wednesday, the 27th. West Virginia, that a team nobody can figure out. Against North Carolina, a team that's also hard to figure out. Uh, and the winner gets punished by uh, <laughs> having Mayo dumped on the head coach. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't really have any thoughts on this other than do coaches really want to win this game? I don't I think, think they really – nobody wants it. <laughs> I, see, I see Neil Brown as a Mayo guy. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I see Mac Brown as a Mayo guy. I think both. I was going to say, I bet Mac Brown is a Mayo guy. You know how he's dancing in the locker room. I bet he's thriving. We need a video of some a couple guys covered in Mayo singing Country Roads, Take Me Home. That can be pissed. I think this game could be fun, though. I think West Virginia has kind of been, a, be. they've been a weird team, but they've been, I think, kind of like a a frisky team, a fun team to, to watch this year, unpredictable in a, in a good way. Wow. If you're, I, I have to imagine it's miserable for their fans, but if you don't have a rooting interest and you're just like tuning in, I think this could be a fun one. Go ahead. This, this game be played uh, in three inches of mayo. 
Yes. <laughs> like the case that game, I think that'd be make a lot of fun. It could be more fun. Uh, this bowl, I, I kind of have a crush on this bowl because I think this bowl is exceptionally well run. And I think it's poised to, you know, kind of move up the pecking order. You know, Brian, when you played and ended up in the in the 98 Alamo Bowl, that was like a low bowl. And now it's the highest of the non correct, piece, you know, non New Year's bowls for this conference. I feel like this bowl is poised to do that. And they got a pretty good matchup, but Oklahoma State and AM both struggled at times this year, even though Oklahoma State, what's that S in there before Oklahoma State? Does anyone know what that is? Uh, why, why is it in there? And who put it in there? Um, <laughs> we're hiding that. And, um, uh, but anyhow, uh, I'm, I, I kind of looking forward to this game. I really am. And I don't yeah. know why. I just kind of like the Texas Bowl. I, yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's a well run bowl. You're right. Um, that NFL stadium, I think mm-hmm. is one of the nicer ones in Houston. That's a really nice stadium. Um, but it, they usually match two teams. They usually get a, a good game. That's right. what I should say. They usually get a good game. And I think we're going to get another one here. I think AM is better than what people think they are just because they lost some games. They lost some close games, but I think AM is a little better. I wouldn't be surprised if AM, AM doesn't win this football game. AM is in the uh, Houston based Texas Bowl for the 900th time. Just a little tidbit. <laughs> um, okay, also I just think they don't get to go I anywhere. I know. <laughs> hey, where are we going? Uh, we're just going up the road to Houston. Oh, <laughs> so, when, so when we drive the hour or whatever it is, then we're in Houston. Oh, crap. It's still, I still feel like Oklahoma State at like they played in the Big 12 championship game. I know. And they won a lot of games, they beat a lot of good teams. I, I still feel like they're fraudulent. I they have to I think they have to be one of the worst teams to play for a Big Twelve title in Arlington. Yep. Ever. I would agree. I would agree with that. We already talked about the Pop Tarts Bowl, the Alamo Bowl. What a great matchup. Oklahoma and Arizona. Uh soon to be former Big Twelve against future Big Twelve. A lot of fans will be watching this. I know I'm looking forward to see how Arizona matches up with the Oklahoma Sooners. And is this one a similar one, maybe to um K-State with Oklahoma. I know Dylan Gabriel hit the portal right, and he's going to Oregon now. So I don't know if the they've had at the portal. I haven't looked. But maybe a similar thing for them where um, you're fired up, you're going to a good bowl, but you're using it as a springboard in the next year. Yep. Yeah. They have a really good quarterback uh, freshman at Oklahoma as well. Uh, I can't remember what his Jackson name is. Jackson Arnold. From, that's right, Jackson Arnold. He's from Denton, so not too far from where I live. Um, he's really good. He's really good. <laughs> But Arizona, I, I, I agree with with Camilio in the comments. I think that Arizona is going to do some some bad things to that Oklahoma defense. I, they did uh, not impress me all year, and Arizona no. looked fun, fun, fun. They fun. got it together, didn't they? The first three games, they didn't look good at all, and then they figured it out quickly. I think they, they found the quarterback. really good. They finally, found the the quarterback. Yeah, uh, guy. I can't remember his name, but they had the the Gene Delora guy. Yep, and then they switched. And yeah. somebody in the comments did mess, uh, recognize this, so I want to throw it out there. If Oklahoma wins, we will be counting as a Big 12 win. Yes. And if Oklahoma loses, we will actually be counting as a new Big 12 school beating the team that actually yeah. left. Yeah. Yes. 1,000%. 1, Just no so we're what. clear, as That's long right. as we specify beforehand, we get to choose how to depict it however we want. I, uh, I, I did put out a daily delivery today saying the Big 12 needs to root for Texas. And you thought I stepped into controversy last week. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I apologize for that take. I just think you claim it as yeah. a win. You claim it for the conference. We use the money out of them all they're here. Exactly. It's probably a I don't want to say a win-win, but um if if Texas gets like badly beaten up, then you can be like, and you guys think you can compete in the SEC? Really? Like you guys are, are too good to leave our conference and this is how you perform in the playoff. And if they win, it, it, it's like okay, the, the, you can still kind of claim them. Yep. <laughs> like I said with the Oklahoma game and so Win-win. I think there's a win-win for the Big 12 in a way. The Liberty Bowl to see like the Big 12 conference posts, you know, a graphic if they if they were to win and pe- and the Texas fans just be livid that they're still claiming them. Uh, I, I don't even want to talk about this game. The Liberty Bowl uh, is Iowa State against Memphis. Congratulations, Memphis! You get to uh, play your big your big title game on uh, uh, you know your home field, and uh, that's exciting for them. But uh, they this bowl will feature running water this year, so that's kind of a nice a step in the right direction. Last year, they had a huge water main break, and downtown had no water. 
That's just what awesome. happens when KU comes. That's <laughs> it's just the blubbing issues pop up. Yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, and the biggie, let's wrap it up with this the All State Sugar Bowl, the semifinal on New Year's Day. Texas and Washington, despite the seedings you see there with their names, man, Texas is a what four and a half point favorite or something. I was a little surprised by it, boys, but I think Texas is pretty good. I, I think Texas is an exceptional football team when they want to stay focused. I don't think anyone's beating them. Washington, these might be the two best teams. It just might be. Uh, but yeah. uh, I think Texas wins this. I do too. Uh, the reason being is because Texas, every now and then, Washington will want to run the football. I know they air it out and that's what they're known for, but they're going to try to run it. They're not going to be able to run an inch. And also, their offensive line isn't great. And we know that Texas's defensive yeah. line is. And they are going to offense. get after Penix, they are going to get after him. And also, Washington's defense is not any good. They, let, let's just th- say that and throw it out. They're not any good. Texas will be able to run it. They'll be able to throw it. They'll be able to do whatever they want to. As long as they're not committing penalties and turning it over, they will have a field day against that Washington defense. I know it's painful to say, but Texas is winning this game, and I, I'm not going to be surprised if Texas doesn't win this game. Was the, was the Pac-12 this year kind of what the bit, what people – Oh, he froze. He froze right in the middle of a thought. Oh, no. Oh, do you think he froze forever? Uh, am, I, am I back? You're back. You're back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, said, I didn't I, think – I never once assumed it was the computer. I thought it was you. I, I said Pac-12, and, and you cut me off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's, let's we just I I do have a freeze button here. Oh, I don't like this. I'm going to freeze Moving it. Moving on. <laughs> um, uh, any thoughts on Texas, Tim Eberson? Um, I, I'm with Brian. I I I think that that def- Texas defensive line. I don't think they saw anything comparable yeah. to that Absolutely. out west. And I I don't think any. I don't. It, it's possible that no one in the Correct. country has seen anything comparable to that. Um, I, you know, and then may just be wishing just because, you know, that being four yards away from a win against Texas, any as far as Texas can go will make K-State look better. But uh, I, 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 I think that they, uh, they're the team this year. I think they're going to do I it. I agree. That's it for this week's edition of the Insiders. We will not be back next week. None of us are working on Christmas Day. That's how close That's we are true. to the holidays. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be working on Christmas Day. That's true. <laughs> but I, but yeah, we don't tune, want in, to. tune in for the Tim Everson solo show. There you oh, go. Exactly. Yeah. Live from just, Orlando. Just uh, <laughs> plug it away in Orlando. The insider. <laughs> yeah. The insider. We'll just have. We'll just turn this into like a. a a live documentary between Me. Everson oh, yeah. and uh, and Cole Carmody and Zach Carl. Zach, we'll Zach and Cole and I will go live from Fogo to Chow. Can we get a Christmas. GoPro? Can we get a nice. GoPro on Tim in, in Orlando? That's what we need. The Tim Cam. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Remember, we will do the Fitz cast on uh, the twenty eighth for the Pop Tarts Bowl. If uh, you want to watch at home and then pull us up on another device, we'll be having some fun with that. We might do it again later. Because January first, another day the insiders won't be on, is a uh, is a pretty good slate of games, including Texas. So stay tuned for that. And we appreciate our new potential sponsor, Five Hour Energy. As I continue to kiss their butt, because I just want. I'm open product. to a Five Hour Energy tattoo. So yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I I am. Not on my face, because this thing is gold. We'll get a name tat for sure. Yeah. It's you just don't do that. That's it. Uh, We're going away now. Thank you for listening to the Power Cat Podcast. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sunday, the AFC Championship, presented by Intuit TurboTax, is on CBS. The defending champion Kansas City Chiefs go on the road once again to face top seed Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens with a trip to Super Bowl 58 on the line. That's a touchdown! We'll get you set for kickoff at 1 Eastern with a special two-hour edition of the NFL Today, the AFC Championship, Sunday on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. It's the UEFA Champions League on Paramount+. Plus. Europe's top club soccer tournament. Champions versus champions. The best teams facing off in the knockout rounds. Magnificent! And it all takes place. While you're filling out financial reports at work. 
in the middle of your day, in the middle of your week. So use that second screen. Call in sick. Do whatever you got to do to tune in Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Nobody watches the UEFA Champions League like us. Knockout rounds begin February 13th on CBS and stream live on Paramount+. Plus.